Again, the Gerem Dav Misach the Pesach and Dav Tzamek Tzadi Beis begin on the bottom of Tzadi Alv on the Beis two lines over the bottom of the Yamek. We will continue in the next Mishnah, taking on the theme of this parak regarding who is fit to have the carbon Pesach and as it relates to other kachim. Which is caused by the concept of the Pesach and Dav Tzamek. We are joining us for today's Dav. So we discuss in today's Dav is whether an Einin or one who converted on the Erev Pesach is permitted to eat the carbon Pesach on the first night. Interesting, Gemara is going to have a discussion. Some cases where the Rabbanim waived a Din Rabbanim in favor of doing a big, a big Mitzvah, and other cases where they instituted a Din Rabbanim even though they prevent doing a big Mitzvah. But basically, we discussed what kinds of situations would make a person eligible to bring a Pesach Sheni, which that starts the next paragraph. And the Gemara ends with a discussion Get somebody who is far from Yishlam and Pesach Rishon, what's called Dech Rechaika, can he be Yitzvah from by having someone else shepherd for him? Is he actually allowed to even do that? So the key terms the concepts we discuss are likud of tzamis regarding when there's the gathering of the bones of one's relative that there's a halacha preventing him from partaking of kachim based on pras which is the halacha that when you have a grave that was plowed over the whole area is considered as uh, suspect maybe there's a bone of a dead person and tabla bracha is, is the concept that if someone goes beyond the letter of the law that the blessing should come on his head. So we begin the current tab, the on the base, two lines up at the bottom of the yard. We continue again with the theme that we mentioned previous stuff regarding a uh, previous mishnah of Oinen. Ainin, like we said, is someone whose relative died that, that day and was not buried yet. So the Lach is like this. Taibol, he could, he could immerse himself. We mentioned that in the previous Mishnah that he could bring the carbon Pesach, but again, he's Ainin right now, so he tables. But it was and he could eat his carbon Pesach that evening. Now, as Rashi points out, even though the relative wasn't buried yet, but as we had mentioned in the previous time, Aninus, this of being forbidden for Kachim because you're an Ainin, Biblically, is only by the daytime. Like Aaron Akain said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, why? Why did you burn the carbon? He says, ain't hey, you a What do you think? They uh, today sacrificed it? He says, I'm an Oynen, and I'm going to eat the chatzas today? Today is the day which is usher. At nighttime, then, it's permitted. And why does it require Tevila? So again, so it's not a problem eating the carbon that night, even if the person wasn't buried yet. Because although it's an Oynen, but by nighttime, it's only rabbinic. Why is it requiring Tevila? Because this is one of the 11 places where we have a Maila of Chaim HaKadosh, which we'll learn in Mitzvah Mech HaGigit of Chavav Manalf, that says, They have to table themselves for Kachim, because up until now they were forbidden to partake of Kachim. So the Rabbana required Episod Azat Tvila to go ahead and immerse themselves, even though, really, like the Mechusik Kippurim, he already tabled himself yesterday. And also, Ainin, what do you mean, why is he tabling? He didn't come in contact with any dead person. But since at, 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 when you were on you for a of Kachim, so they required somewhat of a, a tvila, like a, like a differentiation. Now, this whole hetzer of titling and eating your Kachim, your Kachim Pesach that night for an Ainan is only for Kachim Pesach. I will live a Kachim, but then Ainan is not allowed to eat that evening other Kachim because, yes, although Anin is only by daytime that it rises, so, but by nighttime it's rabbinic. If the person wasn't buried yet, your relative, although it's nighttime, it's rabbinically problematic. Now, regarding Pesach, and this is going to be a theme of today's daf. Well, he meets the rabbi Malcolm Karas. <laughs> if you don't need to go on Pesach, you, you're, you're violating a, a, a chiv, not only of, of a dairaisa, but of a karas if you don't do this. So the rabbana did not institute their isra of aninus of nighttime when you're not going to do something that's of a karas. But in contrast to kachim, which is only just a positive commandment, there they said, yeah, you're an ainin. Ainin by Laila is, is, is forbidden the rabbana. But karas is if. If yes, you're not going to get the karas. Right, but the Rabbanan didn't do put their thing in the makam of a, such a chashava, a severe mitzvah like that of karas. Now, whereas Hashemei al Mesai, now these are exceptions to the rule. Let's say someone hears, uh, which what's called Yemesh Shmu. Yemesh Shmu is that like, they had this nebuch by the Machoma, was like this, where people didn't hear about their relatives that passed away until months or years later. So there's halacha that rabbinically you're an Ainu. Although it's not really the person didn't die today, but if Hashemei al Mesai, that hearing is a rabbinic ayin, as we say in Tabat Tzadik, we have or another case. If somebody had his fathers and bones of his parents gathered, which, oh, that's also interesting that they had not, uh, there was a, like, let's say, Chaz Shomai Beisak Kvaris, where it gets flooded, and they have to go ahead and gather the bones of one's parents. The Gemara Moit Kat Nefchaz tells us, you have to mourn that whole day as if that was the day of their death. Now, but that's only during the daytime, and there's no mourning in the evening. So these two cases, Teva Valichal B'Kachim, you could immerse yourself, and you could eat even, not even Karm Pesach, even regular Kachim that evening, because here even the day itself is rabbinic. So therefore at night time, you're not going to have rabbinic aninus, so therefore these two cases of a Shemei Al Mesa and Makal Eretz Samais, you could Teva and eat the Kachim that evening, because you're not even rabbinically aninus, because even the daytime is rabbinic aninus in these two cases. Now, Mishnah says, interesting case, Geshe Nesgabar Pesach. 
a guy happened to have converted on Erev Pesach. So the Gemara will explain exactly what this means, but Bishamim, he says, Okay, so go ahead, Taival, and you eat your Karm Pesach that evening. But still, he says, no, in the, Arlo, the words he says is that someone that's separating from the foreskin, I mean, when you, get it, when you become a ger, you have to have bris mila. It's kaposh from the kevis, like he's moving himself from the grave, which is just like when you came out with a dead person. You have to immerse, you have to, you have to have, get sprayed for the paraduma ashes, day three and day seven, you have to go pure again on seven days. That's the thing, the guy cannot bring his compass up. Now, he's like a tummy mess. They want to explain, why would that be? Why the guy is kaposh from the arlo, kaposh from the but the first says, my temple, what's the reason of the opening halacha of the Mishnah? The Mishnah says, regarding that, of an Ainan, the halacha is that he's forbidden to partake of Kachim, but he's forbidden to come Pesach. Why? What's the between Pesach and that um, Kachim? Says the Gemara, because Kesav, the Tanah by Mishnah holds Aninus Laila, the Laila Drabam. That being an Ainan, again, an Ainan, not an Afal, an Ainan is when you're, the close relative passed away and they weren't buried yet. It's only considered an oin, which you forbidden the kachim during the daytime. At nighttime, once it's already nighttime, there's no biblical halacha benin, it's only rabbinic. We got a pesach, we made the brain. So, regarding the halacha of eating the pesach, they did not institute their rabbinic prohibition of eating the karm pesach because of rabbinic aninus, but makam karas. <laughs> pesach is a, is a severe mitzvah where it's only the, one of the two mitzvahs say that you have karas if you don't do it. So, therefore, that's why you're going to be able to eat the karm pesach at nighttime. But regarding eating a regular carbon, they instituted their rabbinic prohibition even in the place of a positive commandment because eating kachim is just a positive commandment. It says in Shemais, but again, it's not that of a, a severity factor of, of karas. Therefore, they said, yeah, Mr. Einan, you can't go ahead and eat it. Now, the next halach was, and the Mishnah said, if someone hears regarding, he just heard a Shmu that his relative passed away months ago, he never knew about it. Or if they gathered the bones of his parents, which are both rabbinic Einans, so that's only during the daytime and nighttime, not even rabbinically, you're going to go ahead and table and eat your kachim that nighttime. But the Gemara has an interesting question, but at some is, wait a second, it sounds like he himself is gathering the bones of his parents. So forget about the fact that the bones were gathered, he himself became tummied by the bones of a dead person, day three and day seven. So how are you saying that he can go ahead and eat the kachim that nighttime? So the Gemara says, doesn't mean he gathered the bones. They gathered the bones, he had some workers gathering the bones, and by himself didn't, there's still a halach of likitus at tamis, which you have to be an onion rabbinically that day, but it's not a nighttime, and he's definitely not tamis, he's inside the bones himself. The next case was Gershon's guy, Bukhulu, regarding a gear who converted on Erev Pesach, from Machlik Zemeshat Mesil, if he could go ahead and have the Karm Pesach that nighttime or not. Now, Amr Rabbi Rechon and Rechon, he explains like this, Machlik is a Machlik, this is about Oral Nachri. We're talking about where there was a non-Jew who was uncircumcised, which, that's important, where he has not had Tuma as a non-Jew. The whole halach of Tuma is actually only by Jew. Non-Jew don't become Tuma. Now, so that's the halach. Bezal is a very Bezal held. We have a rabbinic concern. Shema Yitma. Maybe this person is going to become Tuma with a dead person. Lashana Haba. The next year, Arab Pesach. When he's a Jew, ready for a whole year. For him, he's going to say, Ah, Ashtaki, last year, Miloi, didn't I purify myself from old Tuma? that I had up until Arab Pesach because I converted and Talati Bachati. I thought, yeah, the day before I was touching dead people and then Arab Pesach I became a Jew and I told and I ate that night. Oh, Akshan Nam here also. Oh, I became Talati this morning. You know what? It's okay. I remember last year Arab Pesach. That's what exactly happened. It's my little. I'll tell you what The lawyer, he's not going to realize the Shtak in Nachri Hava. Last year he was a non Jew. And actually, this is what we, someone pointed out in the previous stop that actually Gerim, they know less than Jews. And that's actually why he said not to have a group full of Gerim, say something from the Yishanli, is because they know less. And this guy doesn't realize, doesn't know Jewish law. He became a, 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 a Gerim last year. He's not going to have the Shtak in Nachri Hava last year. You know why he worked? Because you were a non Jew. And a non Jew is not a Kabbalah as a non Jew. So that's why you were allowed to tell and eat that night. You only just became a Jew. So therefore, that's why when he's Megayer, he has to wait seven days automatically because to make sure that no matter what Toma he had, that he's going to be purified. Now Rashi points out, I the Ziva. Maybe he had a Ziva in this term, which actually requires eight days because you need to have your Kaparo on the eighth day. So Rashi, yeah, but since it's not possible for him as a non-Jew to bring a Kaparo because he had, didn't have a Toma as a non-Jew, you're going to say such a Xer, he's never going to be at all, so then we don't make a Xer of that. But it means at least for the Toma of, let's say, Mess, which is the most of seven days, that's what it means. Haparishim in the Arlo Kaparishim in doesn't really mean that if you get a bris milo, that means to say that you got, you like as if you touched a dead person. It's just a, a, a way of saying it in a way that, to remember, but it means to say that a guy who converted, we're concerned that next he's going to become tummy also, and he's going to think that, okay, I can just tell you about E right away, which is not the case. 
Mishamis, and Mishamis, and Mishamis, and we don't make such a gazer. Because as the Gemara explains, Abu Yisrael, Abu Arul Yisrael, let's say a Jew who is uncircumcised, where he, if he would become tummy right now, he would be careful because even a Jew who is oral, he knows he can become a tummy like any regular person. No reason to make such a gazer from the following year. Maybe I call everyone would agree. Tell you, Bochel is Peskel Arab. Of course, he could tell you, he's come past in the evening. Even if you just get the first meal now, look, you're already so much of all. We're not making such a gazer to say that, oh, a Jew who is uncircumcised, that we should be there up to a non Jew who is uncircumcised, and to say that even the Jew should not be able to do that, there's no such a thing. And Tanah is only the Brahsa. I'm sure Allah says, we never become a silly Ari, so there's no machlekis, there's no disagreement between Misham and Sills regarding a Jew who is uncircumcised. On Arab Pesach, and he gets his bris mila. Shtei b'achas bris of course, he can tell you he just become Pesach that evening. Aman af gurar, what is the machlekes that Laura Nachri on a non-Jew that was uncircumcised? That he's becoming a gary now on Arab Pesach. Shem Hashem, when they say tei b'achas bris mila, go ahead, tei b'achas bris mila, you come Pesach that evening when you're full blood Jew. The son, they say, no, a person like him, who's separated from the syrup foreskin, is like separated from the grave. Mean to say that you're not going to realize next year that when you become tummy, you're going to think, okay, great, I was tummy last year and I was able to eat it and hate so through here. He's not going to realize that he was not the couple tummy last year because he was a non Jew. And because of that, we make Xavier even now not to be able to go ahead and bring the common pestle. But that takes us into the Gemara's next discussion, which we find that sometimes the Rabbanan actually, because of the Din Rabbanan, they went ahead and they sacrificed they, uh, the, the mitzvah not to be able to do it. As Amar Rabbi says... So uh, the, the Akurish Mina'al only applies by a goy? Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really mean that you, when you separate from the foreskin as if you separate from a, from a grave. Nothing to do with that. Yeah. It just means as a, as a guy, if you, beca- if you had a, ever had a milo and you became Jewish, that's really what it means to say. You're not going to realize that you, had, you weren't a Kabbalah Toma and therefore that's why you want to bring the Kabbalah Pesach. So to prevent the problem from next year possibly happening, we said that even now, we're really a full Jew, you can't bring your best. As that takes us to the next one of the discussion. Well, Rabbi says, two groups of three. One of like, that they waived the, the Nirem, one of something they sacrificed. Meaning, Aurel, someone who's uncircumcised, Hazar, regarding the spraying, Vizemel, and regarding the knife, which these are all mnemonics from Mehmet al these are, he made the Nirem, here, they instituted that the, the rabbinic law will still be, even though there's uh, something of karas, like a karmbez, they not fulfill it. In contrast, Ainid, someone whose relative died that day, who made Saira and he had Saraf, who based on Pras, regarding a field that was plowed over uh, where there was a grave, Lenin the Rebbe Makumkars, there, the rabbis did not maintain the rabbinic law because they wanted you to fulfill the mitzvah, which has a severity effect on the karas. So it could be either one. There were sometimes yes, sometimes not. And the Gemara goes through each one of these six, three and three, oral, so the one of the uncircumcised Hadamah, that's what we said before, going on the Allah Chabah Mishnah, that we said an oral that was a Nachri, meaning a guy who converted, where he's really fit that night to have the Karm Pesach. Interestingly, he has a Chiyav Kars, a regular Jew, bring Karm Pesach, but because of a of next year that he might be Tomei, the Rabban said, no, you cannot bring a Karm Pesach that year. So it's a Chiddush. Because of a Gzeir Rabban of next year, you might be Tomei, they have made the rain by God. You can't bring the crown pass which really has a you have, you have an obligation. Can he be Mimuna without bringing it? In other words, he will be Mimuna of it? And it can be Yoitse, the Korban? No, not because. Yoitse Achille. There's two things. A Borsa Korban. You can't do that with Achille. Right, you, know, you have to be able no, to. No, because he, he, because it's Mam Shachir of Kuris, so Chachomim Amar of Kia Kuris, you could say Mam Kiva to eat them so you cannot eat. I know, but. No, but he's not the Rechoiku. You could be Mafkia maybe from him not to eat, but from not... He's from Tumar. Kuris, he's Tumar. We say, you know, we hear the Chachomim don't want to go to us something that's a Chachomim with the Chorus. Maybe he should be right. able to be Memune, but not to eat. Hey, you want to make a Lamdash Hashpah and say that they should make a Chatsi type, and this man, he's going to know to remember that he's only... Al Gavon, the Rabbanan seems like they were concerned to not make this in blanket. They said, this guy cannot go ahead and bring the Kavim Pesach. Now, that's the case of Aro. Now, Hazo, we have a grounding spraying also. The Amma that the Master says, brought in Perigil of Barim, it's a Mishnah on the Samachim Abbeis. Hazo, to spray somebody that's Tommy on the seventh day when he has to become purified, that's only a Shavuot. Rabbinic Issa, there's no, there's no Issa, the rice of spraying somebody. Kids have water fights all the time. What's, what's, what's spraying someone? It's, it's like Masak and Man, it's like you're fixing the guy, his body becomes pure. So it's a rabbinically problem. Now, even so, it's not Beich Shabbos, meaning, the Rabbana said you cannot spray a guy on the seventh day and he's not going to bring the Karma Pesach. So you see him into the brain, but Makum Karas, just if it, all you're trying to do is sprinkle a part of ashes on them when they have Pesach on Shabbos. So even though it's going to prevent them in the Karma Pesach, no, they don't let you go ahead and spray him, even though it's Isra Rabbana. So him into the brain, but Makum Karas. And 
The third case is the example of the kids in the knife. The time I learned the bris, like shim shim, mavina, he said, just like now I bring the knife from bris milo, they're just from through the streets. Kachim mavina, he said, they're gagis, now I bring them through the roofs, they're chatsis, through the courts of their kavivas, and through the enclosed areas, even though those are only rabbinic domains, and you're not going to bring your crown pesach, meaning, what does bris milo do crown pesach? If you have a male in your family to circumcise, he withholds your validity, as the bris teaches, if you have males and slaves in your family and you're not circumcised, then you're not allowed to go ahead and eat the carbon pesach. So, so the fact that you can bring this knife through a chatzar, was only rabbinically driven on Shabbos, yeah, and you're not going to do the bris milah, you're not going to do the carbon pesach, you see him, a uh, third case, and I mean the debris, but makam karas, rabbinic law will prevent you from fulfilling your chiyam of pesach. Now, now we have three cases the other way around. That loy me the debris, makam karas. The first one is oinin, which we had mentioned, aninus of lilo. We said if the person's relative was not buried yet in his nighttime, it's only the minute of the month. So that we mentioned before of our Mishnah, that we said the Oinah could eat in the evening. Where, obviously, Allah, he made the brain. The rabbinical of being an Oinah at nighttime, he said, Mamakam Karas, no, we're not going to keep that, and you could eat the Kambas. But sorry, Mahi, what's the second case of that in Mitzayra? So this is a little bit of a complicated case. It says, Gemara, the Tanakh, Lina, Bryce, Mitzayra, who titled, he had hair of Shemesh of his seventh day of purification. Now, Vroa Keri, Boy by yay. Now, he he on the on the on the eighth day. On on the eighth day, uh, he comes into Machna Levi, which is the Harbais. He comes into the Shar Nikoner. Shar Nikoner, although it's opening into the Azara, that gateway was not sanctified with the sanctity of the Azara. Like the pastor says, make you down. The Hemen Akoyin Hamitar is Ishamitar. The coin who's purifying will, will put the person who's being purified. And the Oisam Levi Hashem is going to put in front of Hashem. Now, he couldn't go into the Azar itself, rather, because he's dummy, rather he would stick his bohinus, which is his big thumb and, and, his, and his, his, his digit at the tip, because a mechus kapar, which is what the Mitzvah is on day 8, he didn't have his carbon yet, cannot come into the Azar, as the Gemara teaches the market of Chesem HaMabed, Tameiyah includes even the Tulyayim, and Oytum Masabai includes even the mechus kapar, where they come into the base of Mechus Mikhail Kav. So a Mitzvah on day 8, <coughs> What he does is, like we said, he comes in, and he, 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 Shechal Sheminish Lebe'er Pet, well, I think I skipped the line. It's a Mitzayra, a Mitzayra, who he titled and he had a Shemesh on the seventh day, Shechal Sheminish Lebe'er Pesach. That his, his eighth day, which again, we said on eighth day, he comes into the Harabayas, and he sticks his, his thumb into the Azara. If his eighth day falls out on Er Pesach, okay, fine, so far everything's okay. But the case continues. Vrog carried by by Yud. And now he had a seminal mission that day, on the his eighth day, which is Arab Pesach. Now what happens is is that Vrog Kerry cannot go even to Machna Levi, can't go even to Harabai. So the Gemara says, on Perigodom does not in the base. We mentioned this on the previous stuff that Vrog Kerry is sent out to Machnas. So the look is like this: title he titles for his carry for a seminal mission, because for his Taras he really tabled yesterday on the seventh day. But Oichel, he'll be able to eat the Karm Pesach that night time. Why? So he more explains. Emrach HaKham Nechom said, Ava Bishad Tvul Yom, although in general some other Tvul Yom of Kerem, is Eina Nech, this is not allowed to go into the Arabi, like the Bar Zedbar Nechom Gimel Ki Yibuchah, Ish, you have a person, Ukevay Hashem, only when it's sundown, Yom Techa Machna, but um, up until sundown, when it's Tvul Yom of Bal Kerem that day, he's not allowed to go in, Zen Nech, this can be going to the Arabi, so that he can be able to get his hands in for the behind us, so he can eat the Karm Pesach that evening. Why? Mutta biyabe, I say, it's better that the positive commandment of bringing the Karm Pesach comes along. She yes, but curse, but that's a severe, I say, which you have curse if you don't bring it. The yitcha, I say, and the override, I say, of a tful yoyim in the Harabayas. Shame but curse, which doesn't have a, a penalty of curse by being in Harabayas. It only has curse if you go into the Azar. I, so Rashi says, what do you do with the fact that he's sticking his hands into the Azar and he's about carry? And there's a punishment of curse. So that's a Rashi. Well, the Gemara tells us, in Zvachim, the Flamad Beis and Beis, first of all, there's a Mandama holds what's called Biva Mixus Lashem Abiyah. Only partially entering is not considered entering. So the fact that you stick in your hand is not a problem. Or there is another pin that holds that no, since he's already permitted to have this Biva Mixus for Saras, even though there's a punishment of Karas from the Tzara to come into the Beis Amigdash, but he's allowed to because Machos Yikipur and the Pasuk permits him to make of Hashem. Oh, so once it's Mitech Shahutra, let's say so hutter af mikiruya. It's also permitted from as a balkari. So that's why it's not a problem with the machne shchina with the azar. But what's with the azar? Well, what's with the harabayas? Oh, that's because yovei asay she is because biyitcha 
as Asay Shemba Karts. Now, the, the, the Ryan doesn't finish. But he adds on, he says, wait a second. This that we said when he's about Kerry on his eighth day of Tzarat, on the Harabayas, that we said you're allowed to go in there because we need you to be able to have the dam of the Bahainas on you by sticking your hands in the Bazaar, that it's going to override this Asay Shemba Karts. It's actually not precise. It's not even, he says, according to the Vatar, it's going to the biblical law, fill us a same way. It's actually not even the positive commandment regarding its full yom and That's only rabbinic. The positive that says, Kavah Hashemesh, that is written for Sandam, is actually talking about Machna Shkina. Machna Leviyah, running the Haramais, that's no problem. Now, Shana, like it says, the positive in Dibri Yom and Beit. It says, the Yamid Yashafat, Bekal Yudhu Yushlam, Yashafat got up and he stood up in amongst the assembly of Judea and Yushlam, the base of Shem and Hassan Shem, of Neha Fatah Kadosh in front of the new courtyard. Now, that refers to the Harabais, to the Temple Mount. And it's calling it the new courtyard. My what do you mean the new courtyard? Shechid Shubaydava, that they had made something novel regarding that of the Harabais, and they added on to its sanctity that day. But when they said, Tzvul Yom, let me come this Bamak Leviyah, Tzvul Yom, some of the merchants of that day, should not enter into the Mach Leviyah, which that's the tradition that Rebbe had from his teacher, that this was what they had introduced that day, which means that it's not biblical law. Ah, so this is the sec- case number two. The regarding the Karam Pesach, they did not maintain the rabbinic law, which we're explaining that this halacha about Kerry coming to the Abayas is only rabbinically from then, it was only introduced later on by Yeshua. They permitted you to go in so that you could get to, even to the Shah Nikonur, so that you could be able to purify yourself from your tzaraz, that you not you shall be rejected from Pesach, which I say, Shish So again, this was case number two. Again, Mitzayu became a Balkari on the eighth day of his tarah process and went to the Nikvah and completed his tarah from the Mitzayu, even though it's Issa Drabana for William to go into the Harbayas. We let you go into the Harabaya so that you could get into the Azara by putting your thumbs in over there because of getting you to be able to bring your carbon pestle that night, which you have to only if you purify some of your tzaraz. Bakari will be Torah that night, so Bakari wouldn't have to go into the Harabaya. And the reason why it's a complicated case is because he has to go in because he has to be purified from Mitzari, but he can't, which shows the Mitzari could because he's a, he's a Bakari. And a Bakari, it's full yayim, cannot go into the Harabaya. Oh, there's only rabbinically prohibited. Asay Shish Bikaris is going to over, first thing says it as if already Asay Shayim Bikaris. Then we say, I'm not saying it's a Rabbana. And this is another case with Lohimin the Rebbe, Lohim Bikaris, where it's only a bit of a Rebbe. Case number three is based on Pras. There's a plot of a grave. The town of Lindrisham says, Oh, this we say, Bisham and Bisham Bissil, both Bisham Bissil agree that we do them in days. Shabbatikin, that we check, meaning you can walk in a base of Pras, which is rabbinically a primitive area because it was plowed over and maybe there's pieces of bones all over you, but when you could check, you could you could go walk over Beis At least a pesach for those who come and do common pesach. If he has no other way to get to your shulam to bring his common pesach, but the invite to left the truma, you cannot do such a checking if you're on your way to eat truma. Rather, you have to wait or go around, wait a day or two until you reach your truma and eat it, because there's nothing pressing to allow you to go ahead and go through this uh, prohibited area to eat truma. Now, says my my boykin. What does it mean boykin leisa pesach that you? How could you check? What does it mean you check as you're walking through the base of Pras? So he has two interpretations. I'm going to read the Mishmul. He says that it's minapeh pesa pras vayilu. What you do is you blow on the ground when you're walking through this pesa pras, and you keep on walking. Because as we said, the Mishnah says all this that the pesa pras is a process from broken, like a piece. It's a field where you plow over a grave, and that makes in the pesa pras the an area of where the plow would take a hundred amas. But in other words, maybe the the plow ground grind down the bones and it's dispersed it in the length of the of where it's plowed, and now you might have a bone the size of barley corn, and you're gonna go over and you're gonna move it. And a bone the size of barley corn contaminates by touching or by making it move, which is what's called hesed. So then what you do is like this, you blow it with your mouth, and there, mamasha. If there's a, a bone that's very large, you'll see it. And if it's small like a barley corn, it'll blow away when you blow it. And I, you might be walking over it and that's oil. No, there's not too much oil with just a bone. It has to be at least the majority of the structure, the majority of the number of limbs. So that's one approach that you could blow, that's the hetter of even though based upon rabbinically forbidden, like the rain welcome curse, or if you have a body, which made review, normally says based upon Yiddish. If you have a base upon this area that was plowed over and it was trampled already by many feet, then tar because the fact that people trampled over it already, and someone's coming to his karma pesach, he could check it was trampled. If it was trampled, then he could pass over because then you know it was already pulverized, whatever bones are there. But we're going to eat in trouble. We don't rely on that because he could wait. And this we will see again that based upon rabbinically forbidden, and they were not him into the brain, but welcome curse. How do the Yiddish return to you? The eighth parak in the seventh sefer, <coughs> parak Ish, which gets like the woman, which was about which carbon is she on, her husband or father, basically spoke about those that who are counted on the carbon pesach, and also who's fit to have the carbon pesach. And with that we begin the ninth parak in the seventh sefer, parak Mishahayi, which discusses that of a tummy b'derech chaleika, 
regarding the Pesach Shein, he's someone that was at a distance or was Tame and he couldn't bring the cup of Pesach Rishon, then he brings the Pesach Shein. Says the Mishnah, Mishnah, you're Tame. Someone that was Tame, I'll be there for like, oh, it's far away. Well, that was Rishon. And there he didn't bring the cup of Pesach the first time. So he asked the Shein, he'll bring it a month later by Pesach Shein. Now, let's say Shagog in let's say by mistake or something beyond his control. Well, that's the Rishon didn't bring Pesach Rishon. He wrote the Asa Shein, he bring Pesach Shein. Says the, says the Mishnah, wait a second, then Kilomen of a Tame. Then why does the Mishnah, why did the Pazim tell me the case of Tame? I show you that like, or at a far distance. What do you mean? If it's any Shagog, why are you picking specifically these cases? Now, the was going to ask, wait a second, of course you have to say this. Because if you didn't say Tame, you would think that if the guy wants to do Pesach Rishon, that he would think he could. We have to know that he can't not. So, so Rashi explains, no, it's going on Derech Lechaika. With Derech Lechaika is your regular classic Aynas, which you couldn't have do, done it. And if you want to do it through a Shlich, you could do it. According to the one who, the quote, or Sholei the Gemara says that if you do it through a Shlich, it's going to be okay. So therefore, other Aynasin are going to be put on the Pesach Shani. So what's the between Derech Lechaika or some other Aynas? Why is the term mentioning specifically the Aynas of being at a far distance where so many things could be on your control that could stop you from bringing your Karma Pesach? And I, so the thing that the Mishnah is asking, that... It, it could tell you anything. And I, regarding that, it, maybe it's telling you that if you want to do it, you cannot do it. Now that you can't say, because most definitely you could, because we're going like the Mandam of a court, so that if you would do it through a Shleif, it would be valid. So again, so, so why pick it specifically this case? So that's the Mishnah. Sheila between many cards, because all the kids we mentioned here in the Mishnah, if you're Tommy, or you're a far distance, or you by mistake, or it would be beyond your control, and you didn't bring Pesach Rishon, you'd be part of the cards. But the Elu Chayyam be cards, we don't exactly who are these Elu, but anyone else who wasn't, let's say he was amazed that he that he missed Pesach Rishin, actually he'll, he'll bring a Pesach Rishin, but he's going to be had cards for not bringing Pesach Rishin, that's why we're specifying these individuals to tell you that they're going to be potter from cards. But you're right, it's not specifically just these cases. Now, the Gemara says, that's going to bring back to the Allah of the Mishnah. What? Oh, if you're not to get by making it up by Pesach Rishin, I have. Yeah, you don't even get lashes by loving the Pilesa, yeah. So, so the Gemara says, Let's say someone's a far distance. V'shafet b'zor love, and they they slaughtered, and they spread the carbon, they spread the down the carbon pestle with him, and in the evening he comes. Meaning he was really far away. And he himself, right now, at the time of the Shrita, couldn't come in, because the, the time of the Shrita is from six hours in the day, until Shkiyah Zacham, and he was way too far away. He's going to come, he'll make it for the Seder, but he's way too far, he couldn't have brought himself. But he had someone else bring it for him. What's the halacha? It's actually interesting about like this in the Gemara. Not when he says, Hurza, it, it's going to be accepted. And he's, he puts it from a Pesach Shein. And Shisham says, Lord, it's not going to be accepted. So the Gemara explains, why is this? So it's, it's, it's Maflikis in the Lundus, in the understanding of how do we understand the Pasig that says regarding the, the, the people who are telling the Dechavik. Not when Hurza says, of course they accept it. Mechus of the Chazach Manolov, the Torah's only concern for him. That is, that if you were far away, okay, we're not going to punish you, we understand, and we'll let you have a second chance. But the other, if you did it and you sent someone else, tell them about the Of course, this blessing is going to come on you because you went left in the Mishnah then. Rosh Hashem says, no, he says, it's not going to be accepted. So you know why? If you're in a faraway place, not that you don't have to, you're rejected, like the other case there in the past, as you can surely elaborate on this too, that just like a Tommy person, Cannot bring it, and he's going to have to have the pesach sheni. So too, if you're b'derech you cannot. If you're not able to bring it, you cannot even have a shleir do it for you. Now, I'm not going to say says, Where do I know that you actually it is hurtza? That it is acceptable if you did do it, even though you didn't have to. It's not like the Mishnah says Misha, you tell me tell me we're on a far away road. Well, that's the reason he didn't do a pesach rishon. So he said yes, sheni. Okay, then you go ahead and you can bring the pesach sheni. Now it says the Gemara, but yeah, it says it's not machlal, but the inference is. But right, it said beloy asa that he didn't do it. It's the inference is the by if he wanted to do that, oh, but he could do it. Now, as Rashi explains, it cannot be going in the case of Tommy because Tommy obviously cannot do it even if he wants to. It's obviously going in the case of Derech Chazaker. Ah, so you see that someone's a faraway place that he if he didn't, okay, we're not going to punish you for being best of training. But if you wanted to, sounds like you could. But why is it beloy asa? Of course, beloy asa, you can't. Obviously, that you could. Rashi Shamalach, he would tell you no. He says, it's a little complicated answer, but he says like this. He says, Ihachi, if the truth would be like you're saying, then say for the Tani, look at the next case of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, Shagur Gurinan, this is by mistake, he didn't bring the Pesav, or Oinan, or something beyond his control, his car broke down, whatever this is now. Plus, he didn't bring the Pesav Rishin. So the Mishnah said, okay, also be a Yasa Chen, you do the Pesav Chen. Now, for the fact that the Tani, that it said, Voloi Asa, 
that he didn't do Pesach Rish, Mechal, you would make the same deal, same inference, be by that he wants to, that of it, that he could do Pesach Rish. On which case are you talking about? Harry Shagar. He was, he was an error. He didn't know that today's Pesach. Very then this would be on his control. What's he buy? What would you say? If he wants to, what do you mean if he wants to? What do you mean if he wants? He didn't know what was beyond his control. How can he make such a deal? Ella, rather, what are you going to say? When the Sefer says that, Veloyasa, that he didn't do it, it's going on someone that could have done it. Who's that? None of the cases that you mentioned. Yeah, there's a case that's missing. Mezid Ketoni Bahadai. It's as if it said there the case, another case of deliberate. If such a person didn't do it, but if he wanted to, he could have done it. Then hachinami here also. Then in the case of the Reisha of Loi also is oimin kitani badayu. There's another case that's not mentioned over here. When it says v'loi also, that the inference is if he wanted, he could have done it. Is going on the case of oimin, which the Gemara tells us told us on that Tzadik Alf already in that Mishnah that oimin v'kesh legal sheich v'leim, which is he could bring the carbon pesach. So if there's no right to the case of Derech Chayke to say, oh, if he wanted, he could have. No, v'loi also not going on him. Well, who's it going on? It's not going on Tame, and it's not going on Derech Chayke. Oh, it's going on Aynan. I doesn't say that. Well, the Sefer also do, doesn't say v'loi also. Who is that going on? Not Chayke and Anandis, because they couldn't have done They didn't know, or it's beyond his control. Must be it's including those amazing. The amazing, if he didn't do it, I'll bring Pesach Shemi. He's going to get cards, but Pesach Shemi, the, the ratio also, I, who's it going on? It's going on Aynan. And that's what's going on. And Amr Vashi says, I'll actually prove this to you. Masnei Namadeka said, our Mishnah also is precise that it's as if Mazin and Aymin were said in the Mishnah. Why? Because in fact, the Mishnah concludes by saying, oh, so wait a second. Why did I tell you, tell me that if I'm including all Shagin and Aymin? So the last words of the Mishnah are, oh, to tell you that Eilu Batum Rekars, that these are exempt from cars and they didn't make completion. Eilu Chayyab and Bikars, but those who are those, oh, the other group are Mikhail and Kars. Wait a second. A high. Who are the other ones that you can say are chai because you didn't mention anyone else? As the Gemara explains, Elam Ashagbalans. If you think it's saying, oh, only talking about Derech Chayka, oh, that's what the pasuk mentioned them to say that they're going to be potter from cars. But Shagig Nainis, if they didn't bring it, they're going to be chai because Shagig Nainis, but they cars Nainu. How is it so Shagig or or Nainis? Nainis Rachman Apatre and Shagig. That's always you never chai because it's a chai b'chafas. How could you say the chai because? I love, rather, obviously, amazing Nainu. It's going on this, the, the secret cases that are not explicitly mentioned in the Mishnah, which we said that in the Sefer and the Reisha are the cases of Mezer and Aynan, which is like Revishatius, that those cases are the ones that Mikhail cars, but those are the ones that were saying that Vilayasa, meaning if he wanted to, he could have done it, but not Derech Chaika, because Derech Chaika, actually, if you, even if you wanted to, you could not have done it. But says the Gemara Nachman, who he says that actually, no, there is no case of Aynan in the Reisha. And he learns below us is actually going to be there because the guy in there like actually if he wants to, he could bring it. I'm not going to tell you, no, the truth is, I'm No, you're right, there is one secret case from the Sefer where for sure there, there's, there's a case missing because when the Sefer says below us, it's not going to show you So for sure, that you would have to add in the case of Mazin. But wait a second, then why does it say Chayavin that by those who will be Chayavin in the plural of Karas if there's only one case? According to Rav Sheish, there's two, there's two secret cases. Case of Mason and Ayn. But according to Rav Nachman, there's only one secret case of Mason. So why would we say Bechayavin in the plural? We should only say in the singular. Because only one secret case, that of the Mason, that the Mechayim Kar is not Ayn. So, on that says the Gemara, Bedinu di Bailin and Mason Chayim. Right, the truth is, it should have said in the singular, Chayim. That Be'elu Chayim, which is the case of Mason. Because that's the only secret case mentioned in the Mishnah, because the case of Nereisha, of that. Shabbaloi Asa, which is the of Iboi Ovid, is going on the case of the Mishnah explicitly of Derech Chayyim, not of Ayin. But why did he come So why does it say Chayyim in the Lashon Rabbim? As I've done the Rishon Peturin, since the Rishon said Peturin, which are all these cases of Tameh, Derech Chayyim, and Ayin, and Chayyim, says in the plural. So it's not the same the same. also said Chayyim in the plural, but really, it should really say Chayyim in the singular because, again, the case of Veloi Asa, the Rishon, the Machlaik is, where Papa says, oh, that's going on the secret case of Ayin that's not there. And that those are the Elu Chayyav and the Ikaras. And Rav Nachman says, no, it's not true. Derech Chayka, if he wants to, he could have done it. And that's the case of Balei also to tell you that, but if he wanted, he could have done it. Because no secret case of Ayin. So then there's only one case then that's being, that quote unquote mentioned in the Mishnah, that you have cards not being present originally. That amazes why I say Chayyav and really, Shur says Chayyav. It's just kept the symmetry of Peturin and Chayyav. Then Amr of Shesh says, where do I know this idea, my opinion, that it's not going to be accepted, even if you want to do it. 
out of the out of the out of the goodness of your heart, you want to fulfill the mitzvah. You send someone. I'm going to come later on by the same night. How do we know that it's not going to be hurtzer the derech chachai? You're talking about the brayser. Kibami says nemed tame. It says in that pasuk in the midbar, the person if he's tame couldn't bring it. But nemed derech like the same pasuk you talked about. If he's on the far road, this is pasuk in midbar test. Now, so therefore, as we continue talking about the midbar, Kibami makes the following hekish. Ma tame just like the tame person shesti to be yadil asayis. Where if the Torah wouldn't reject him, he's here. I'm right here. I'm in your shalim right now. I have an opportunity to bring it, and still vain I say he's not allowed to do it. The Torah says no, you're not allowed to bring it. Okay, after Chukunami, then the equivalent of the case in the, in the pasuk of in the far away, Shasid big biyadilasa is where he also could go ahead and do it because he could send an agent to bring it for him. But the Torah is saying no, you're not allowed to bring it. The Torah is rejecting you, not just exempting you, but rejecting you, because it's comparing you to that of Tameh. So you see clearly, says Rosh Hashanah, like me, that not only you don't have to, but you're actually not allowed to. But not going to tell you, oh, Rabbi Kiva, that's not Tameh. Rabbi Kiva goes according to his reasoning. The Ksavah he holds, in Shei Muzayi Lo Tameh Sheretz, he holds, which we discussed in some previous Tathem, that if someone's Tameh from a Sheretz, which, he's going to fit that, that evening, he titles that night by the Satan, he's going to be tar, still, Rabbi Kiva says, you cannot bring the common peasant with Tama Sheretz. Oh, so this that Rabbi Kiva says, that seek would be all the last. You know what he means to say? He means just like a Tama person, which you could go ahead and you could actually bring it because you actually could eat it that night. Even so, Rabbi Kiva holds, ain't Shech Mazar going to love. So if he compares it to Derech and Chaykeh too, that even though the would be the last, he's not going to bring it. Oh, it says, not about us, really, come on, but I hold. That's not a right to me for Rabbi Kiva. I hold it goes, the Rabban who disagreed him, and hold Shech Mazar going to Tama Sheretz. That you could bring the common pesach with the Tamisharas. And therefore, here also, where you could enter in at the time of eating, which is because you're a far away distance, of course you can be Shabbat Zerkel, just like the although he can't do it himself now. You can send the Shliya, because tonight is going to be tar, so to by me, although I can't bring it now, because I'm a far away road, I'll call up and say, please bring the common pesach to me. Of course I can do it, and there is not difficult of Nachman from this Allah of Akiva. So we're discussing today's daf from Sachem, daf, Sadi Bey. Was we began with the Mishnah, continuing on the theme of Oyni that we discussed in the previous Mishnah, regarding that we said that he could be Taibul and eat his Karm Pesach that evening. But not by Kachim, what's the difference? So we're going to explain because really I mean this Laila is Drabban. So, regarding the Chiva Seishish Bekars of Pesach, okay, Lohimina Devrein. But by Kachim, which is just a Mitzvah say, so he made the Devrein. Now, in contrast, although by Kachim we said you cannot buy Nina Laila, but if you Regarding heard regarding your dead person that had passed away a few months ago, you just heard now that his sister or mother, whatever it is, or they gathered the bones, which there, that aninus is even by the daytime only rabbinic. And therefore, nighttime is not going to be rabbinically prohibited, and therefore, you can even need your kajim, you can tell your kajim in those two cases. Now, regarding a gersh in the sky, so we had a machlekis. What's the machlekis? When we say kaparish when I can't hurt, it really doesn't mean that because doing a bris is like, like you're becoming tummy from a dead person. It's exera up to the next year, where you might have become tummy that day or the day before, and you're going to think, okay, great, last year when I became Jewish, I was tummy, I touched it, I was at a funeral the day before I became tummy, and I was able to eat the karm pesach that night, then so, no, so the next year also, it's not true, it doesn't realize that as a non jew didn't become tummy, which that gets us into the most discussion that there were two groups of three. One was the oral hazan, the zemel, and there was another one of oinam mitzrayim besapras, which oral is the case of our Mishnah where he became a ger. Aza is the case of someone has his tummy mess on his day seven on Erev Pesach. And he's almost there bring a knife to do the bris milah for a zakhar in the family, where if you don't do any one of these things, exactly have to come Pesach. Still the Rabbanon wore him to the rain. They said, yes, we can't do this on Erev Pesach. And therefore, the guy's not going to do this carbon Pesach. You see, rabbinic law is that strong. On the other hand, there's three cases. That of the Einan, which is also that we mentioned, if the person is an Einan by Laila, which is Rabbanon, where we let you bring the carbon Pesach, even though at night you're going to be rabbinically an Einan. And Mitzayr is a very complicated case of a Tzvul Yoyim of Balkari on the Harabayas, where he was a Mitzayr on day 8. And he has to go out and put his behind us in, but he can't get in now because he became Balkari, which a Balkari Tzvul Yoyim can't go into the Harabayas, let alone to get into the Azara, where we let him violate that, which first we thought it's a Seisha, and because we're saying not really a Seisha, because it's actually only rabbinic. We let you override the rabbinic so that you can go ahead and be able to be compassed that night. Huh? And so it's a base of process, all the rabbin, uh, rabbinically forbidden area because maybe there's a bonus at the barley called Loy Mitzvahim in those places because on the way to being compassed. Hanulah Chaisha, happy Adar. That's confetti if you can't realize. Let's go, Perik Tess, Misha Hayat.
So he started Mishahaya, that's Tomei B'derechik, but someone that was Tomei or on the faraway road, which those are the two cases that the, the Pesukim talk about, or really the, the Mishnah said actually any Oynes, he goes ahead and he brings a Pesach Sheni. Now, the Machlech is in the Gemara, if he did do it, in the case of Derechachika, if that's going to be accepted. On the one hand, you say, yeah, Chas Rachman, the Rav Nachman says, of course it's going to be accepted. Turk just exempts you. But of course, if you want, you could do it. No, Rav Shesh says, no, you can't, because you reject it. And the Machlekes is how to resolve with the words in the Mishnah of Chayavan, because the Quran actually makes sense. Chayavan includes the, the hidden case of Mazid and of that of Oynen, because, what do you mean, him also? They, they could not have done it. So that's Chayavan. Rav Nachman says Chayavan, really, it should say Chayavan, it just says Chayavan, because to keep the symmetry. And then the Gemara concludes, Rav Shesh wants to bring a right from the Kiva, that you see Rav Kiva holds that the, the, their Chayavan cannot bring it like the Tameh, says no. Nachman says, Rabbi Kiva holds, you cannot shaft for a tummy shaft. And that's why you cannot do it when you're there for because the Pasuk appears there for Tamei Mis, but Tamei Mis is, the, that of, of, of Sheretz is seeping beyond the losses because he actually will be tired that night. And still, Rabbi Kiva holds, you cannot bring it for that person, so for sure there are going to come that night, you can't do it. But he says, I don't hold Rabbi Kiva, I hold like those that hold that you could shake the Mazak and Tamei Sheretz. Therefore, that would be the same thing there for Chayka, where you could go ahead and bring it for him, and there is no contradiction from Rabbi Kiva. Uh, on for, on the opinion of Nachman. Thank you any time for hosting us.